Uh, Whitney Sullivan with WLTX. So my first question is for you, Asia. Um, so, so many people see you as a hero, right? Not just because of what you do on the court, but off the court. And you use your platform to advocate for causes that you are passionate about. So my question for you is, when it comes to the salary difference between WNBA and NBA, what do you want to see moving forward? What do you think needs to happen in order to close that gap? Uh, investing, uh, literally putting your money where, like, where your mouth is. It sounds good. It really sounds good. It looks great on Twitter. It looks great on social. But what are we doing behind the scenes to make sure that we continue to invest in women's sports in general? Uh, obviously, I'm gonna say basketball because that's my sport and I love money. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like, this isn't like Nikki said in the White House. Like, this isn't a fancy. This isn't a fad. This is, this isn't a trend. And I feel like it's it's always a trend. It's always around March. Everyone falls in love, and then as soon as summer comes around, it just drops and it disappears appears and they just start then you really don't hear from us and then it comes back like we gotta invest in these women we have to really put the money into these women to push the needle forward um, and I think that's what it's gonna take we gotta take those big sponsors and these big names uh, and I'm blessed to have sponsors that follow me shout out to Gatorade just sign period um, <laughs> shout out, thank you shout out to like shout out to those sponsors that are willing to like do it and just like not just say it and when it's a month or what they support it no do it all the time and that's what it's gonna take to continue it's like like those people that have a seat at the table, speak up. Be that voice for the voices. Use that platform in that way because not a lot of us have that seat. So if you are in that seat, use your platform to uplift others. And I think that's what it's going to take. Absolutely. And Coach, for you, you've moved the needle when it comes to this conversation as well. What do you want to see moving forward? I mean, um, I, I think what, what's happened because we've had a WNBA is um, all the younger players that's coming up, they have a, a carrot dangled in front of them for all of their life. Asia has only have, has known the WNBA all her life. Mm -hmm. I mean, young people growing up, they've only have known the WNBA all of their life. Um, if you go back to Becky and I, I mean, baby, Becky's a little younger than I. I mean, I, I didn't know the WNBA when I was growing up. I only knew the NBA. So we would you know, imagine us being in the NBA. They don't have to imagine anymore. I, I want a league that's that's going to pay players what they're worth. I want I want a league that's going to pay coaches what they're worth. Now we, I mean, it's a, it's really a, a still a startup business. Um, the NBA wasn't what it what it's been the first 28 years of its existence. We got to continue to grow. I mean, there is opportunity for investors to get a return on their investment, um, but it has to start somewhere. Like, I, I, and it's a great start, but the novelty of the WNBA has worn off. Now we need to insert some more innovative ideas to, to push the needle forward. You know, for us to, you know, have a real league, have the first, you know, millionaire player. We got the first millionaire coach. Let's let's follow suit. And and I know, I I, I know, um, at the end of the day, um, ownership will be a valuable asset to to whoever wants to step up. I'd just like to piggyback too off what Don said, in the sense of like when we were growing up, like I had all Michael Jordan posters. Mm -hmm. Like there was there was no league for us to play, and even early on in the W, I feel like there was this wave, and then there was this like wave where it wasn't cool, mm -hmm. and it was actually cool to knock on women and knock on the sport, and you know I'm not particularly a, a, a golf fan, but I don't get on my platforms to trash golf, right. you know, and I think people were so went out of their way to to go at these women, and it's time, like she said that. We're paying them what they're worth. And as the most elite women's basketball players on the planet, they are the best of the best. And so if we can just continue to, you know, I told Don, you know, the, the rising tide raises all ships. And it's our job to keep, continue to make sure that that tide rises and it impacts the next generation. But the little girls now, legit, because even when we were, me and Don were playing, if you asked most kids, they would just, little girls, they would tell you the goal was still Kobe Bryant or, you know, Michael Jordan. And it was, it's not now until you're seeing, like, I'll give you an example. I have two little boys. And they had two little friends coming over, and they're playing basketball in my pool. And they're saying, I'm Asia Wilson. I'm Chelsea Gray. <laughs> my dad said, you not see that 12 years ago. <laughs> like, it, it, that's the shift that, that we're trying to push for. 
um, in that the, these little boys and these little girls recognize greatness and want to strive after it no matter what who, who's wearing that jersey or they, they recognize the greatness and um, that's what she, the, these guys represent I think Don represents it at South Carolina the, the standard and it's really great for our sport but it's also great for that next generation